Hello, it's Shannon for UFIT Studio talking about uh, comparison um, equaling unhappy. I could put slash happy, I guess, but in reality, I do think it does make people unhappy. Um, you know, I am going to I am going to reference the person who said this because last time it was really annoying me that I could not and still cannot uh, remember who made this fantastic quote. However, this quote is says comparison is the thief of all joy. That is quite dramatic. You drum roll. Oh. I underlined it when I wrote this. Oh, every single part of joy is sucked out through comparison. This was said by Theodore Roosevelt. Um, those of you who recall, don't recall, also the gentleman who did my favourite quote of all time ever about the man in the arena. If you don't know that one, also have a look at that one. That's a cracker. Theodore, who knew that Theodore Roosevelt was the uh, quotation of his time? They came out with some corkers. And this is one as well. Comparison is the thief of all. Say it. All all joy now <laughs> i think we have all been there that's the funniest thing i mean i will we'll, we'll hashtag yes i've been there um and compare and go Whoa, i wish i wish and see myself in that position in some sense so i compare myself in some way again chetna hey chetna joining so we repeat that check the for joining we're starting this live with a quote comparison is the thief of all joy it's just dramatic dun 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 so says theodore roosevelt um and i'm inclined to believe he has got a point okay uh then why do we do it why do we compare why do we do that to ourselves because we do i think we do i think I, um, again i was just admitting that i am a, a comparison no no I have been, definitely was on my journey, definitely was a comparison in, in a, when um, losing weight, right, and trying to get particular goals. I was very much like, uh, why am I not there? They look like they are ahead of me. Why are they doing better? I want to be where they are. Um, <laughs> and, and I was talking to another client about it last week, and she said, um, we're talking about this. She said, hello, it's FOMO. That guy makes me feel like old. I say, FOMO? <laughs> What is this FOMO you speak of? It's a fear of missing out. So a sense others are having more fun, a better time, um, having things easier, more than you. FOMO, fear of missing out. So missing out that somehow your journey, if you're talking about uh, weight loss, that your journey health and fitness is somehow less, uh, what's the word, fulfilling, less uh, pleasing, less happy, less fun, less genuine right because you're comparing it to someone else like well they look like on social media usually they look like they're training harder they look like they've lost more weight they look they look great in that dress I wish i could look great in that dress etc 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 right because of fear that somehow we're missing out on something in our own journeys because they are further ahead now sidebar ironically i do think because we do it we often do miss out on our own journey for being flipping banging because we're too busy comparing to someone else's going i wish mine was like theirs isn't that ironic don't you think can't help myself however it is it's massively ironic that we compare our, our journeys or our situations to somebody else's and in doing so actually we sometimes miss out or, or do actually miss out on on registering acknowledging how well we're doing on our own journey and how banging our own is and how someone else might be looking at yours that's the funniest thing someone else will be looking, i wish i was like that person we're too busy looking at someone else so that's um, partly why i do i do kind of think well, i've got the point as well fear of missing out fear of missing out on um some part of our journey being more fulfilling better etc um and somebody else's is therefore mine should be like theirs because theirs looks better more fun they've lost more they're saying they've lost more and more regularly, right? Um, training more often, that's always one. They get to train all the time. I want to be like them. Theirs is so much better. No? Okay. Also, also, another point of, of part of doing this, right, which also I find fascinating, um, we often compare ourselves to something that is fully out of our control. Okay, so we often compare ourselves to something that's fully out of our control or even out of our, well, the same thing, sphere of influence, right? So what do I mean by that? It's very rare that we compare ourselves to something that's obtainable. Case in point, because I've also been guilty of this one. Uh, 
it's like looking at somebody else's holiday and thinking, I wish I could do that. But it's just ridiculous. It's like, you know, David Beckham's holiday. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's comparing ourselves to the person that's the best at something. Like literally at the pinnacle of their abilities. So let's say, I know what I was like, um, if I was, when I was in a client and losing weight, I was very much like looking at somebody who was three years ahead of me going, doing all these really crazy, amazing, great exercises and me thinking, I don't want to be like that. You know, they're three or four years ahead of me. I was not going to go into the gym the week after and start banging out this stuff. They're like, definitely not for the size of me at that point. Like, there's no way I was going to do this. And yet I compared myself somehow that I was uh, less able or less, um, well, not as good at losing weight or being healthier because this, this other client was doing amazing stuff. And yet we all do this all the time when we compare, by the way. This is why it is a thief of joy, I think. This is, I'm going to get into this now because it's a very good point, right? We always, and there's a study that came out about this, we always compare ourselves to the fittest person we know or we want to be, right? We say, like, they, they have got, I would love to be like them. They do X, Y, Z, right? What we don't do is looking for the things in between to compare to, right? So if I'm on my start line... And I'm looking at somebody who's run a marathon, <laughs> probably Mo Farah, who's them. Oh, there he is, all the way down there at the end. Uh, I want to be there. I want that. I'm going to compare myself to that person who already has everything that I want. And I'm not looking at the race in between or the, 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 the parts of the journey in between that are fully achievable um, and absolutely within my sphere of influence. If I look to compare to something in between or somebody in between, um, and that's what's interesting, right? If I think of my my um, time as a coach, I have as yet. This is a very true point with this study. I have as yet have somebody. Nobody's ever come to me and said, um, "I want to be like that client who's a couple of pounds lighter than me." Think about when we've ever done that. I'm talking about weight loss now because this is the world I live in. When have we ever said, I want to be like that person who is just one step ahead of you and not a five? When have we ever compared to the person who, I don't know, let's talk money because that comes out a lot in conversation. I'm going to get into specifics, right? My dad always says we agree to talk about knowing money, so he probably would like this. We don't talk about somebody who is, we don't say, I want to be like the person who's earning £500 more a year than I am. We also go do that £500. We think, oh, I'd like to be that person who's earning ten grand more than me. I'd like to think of all the things I'd like to do with that ten grand and can't, right? Now, this is where Theodore Roosevelt talks about where it, the, it sucks the joy out of something. Right, so I'm going to go back into, going to keep my dad happy. Right, <laughs> let him rest. Right, and go back into to health and fitness. So, if I'm comparing myself to somebody who is ten pounds down the line, uh, and say I want to be like them because they've lost ten pounds, I don't want to be like the person who's only lost one pound in front of me because why would I want to be like them? I want to be like the person who's ten pounds down the line. Now, to get there, I'm going to be missing the nine pounds in between that I have to do. That needs consistency. That needs um, the support of a coach needs some understanding of nutrition support around nutrition uh, activity mental stamina do all the stuff in between is that person likely or unlikely to then achieve those nine pounds from my experience they're unlikely to achieve it because they keep trying to grasp that the, the 10 pounds that other person has and not the one pound that somebody closer to them has so when we compare the point i'm getting to at the end of this that the that theodore roosevelt understood very well when he said that comparison is a thief of all joy, I just, I just lost the internet on Instagram. Oh, the back. Um, when Theodore Roosevelt said that comparison is a thief of all joy, um, what he's saying is that um, most people are severely frustrated and often uh, give up on their goals when they, they absolutely compare themselves to somebody so far ahead as a goal that it's unachievable. Okay. They compare their own abilities to that person who has the years of experience, has the years of training, has the years of nutritional knowledge, has the years of mistakes, right? That's the things we don't think about when we compare to people so far ahead of us. They have all these years of mistakes that they've made and we have to make as well, that we're going to make in the steps in between. So that's why it's very, very important 
Um, if you are a client of ours, and you'll know this, it's very rare that we'll say, right, okay, so let's sit down. Okay, you want to lose, well, I don't know, oh, you want to get down to pre-marriage weight. Let's go with something that happens quite a lot. You want to get down to the weight you were when you got, uh, before you got married, before you had kids. Fantastic. That's about 10 kilos from now. So how about we plan it in for next month? Because you're comparing your life to how you were and to other people who, who have 10 kilos down. So let's just get you down in a month. How likely is that going to be a happy situation? If you work with a coach, I mean, that's never been done. Let me do that. God, I'm breaking out of the sweat just thinking about ever having that conversation with a client. I never do that. However, the point is that we look at the steps in between. Okay. So you compare and contrast to previous knowledge, previous abilities, and then move forwards, right? So to encourage yourself, and for me as a coach, to encourage people to compare yourself to people within your sphere of influence, right? So people who've had similar experiences to you, you're having right now, right? So clients and people um, that have, or having the same experiences and challenges as you right now, right? Comparing the coping mechanisms to yours with the issues you're dealing with right now in your journey, comparing your abilities to that, it is more likely to keep you not only running forward, but also not going to suck the joy out of your life because you are actually going to make things achievable. And we all know when we make small steps and we make small achievements, we feel good, right? When we compare to people that are far above where we are right now, um, we do end up feeling a little bit disappointed. So the name of the game is compare to somebody who is within your realm of sphere, right? Sphere, realm, sphere, sphere of influence, control. <laughs> One or the other, right? Um, and always like, I would say this as a final point, I do this a lot of my clients often. Okay, this is how the conversation, I, I, I won't do the skits two-way conversation, which I've done before on here. I will say this is a common conversation with a client. Helen, I only lost two pounds in a week. I'm letting that sink in because I'm, like, I'm waiting for them to say, but that's not a lot. <laughs> it is. I only lost two pounds in a week. I know that someone else has lost three in the last day. I don't know. Or something like that. That's a very common. I've, I've exaggerated the times and the, the amounts, right, for the point of this. However, it's very common. Now, um, I should have done more telling themselves off. Because I'm comparing myself to someone else who, you know, there's no blueprint for this, but apparently I should be a lot further. I don't have no idea, but I should be. Um, whenever having that conversation, which is often a role of the coach, and this is something I would challenge you all to do if you have a tendency to do this with or without using a coach, is to actually look at the things you have achieved in terms of not just the number, but also in your behaviours and habits. I've talked about this before on lives. Okay, so look backwards in your progress and say okay if I compare my behaviors and habits have they improved yes or no am I sleeping better is my energy better right rather than compare yourself to somebody else's outcomes as in weight loss or gain look back at the things you have achieved that are non-weight related if that's a concern because if I had a conversation with 100% of clients 100% of clients I can't even pretend it's never really happened have always found a positive of something that's happened but we're very often compared to the things we have or haven't achieved to somebody else's loss or gains. I'm putting that politely. I think that's very diplomatic. <laughs> right. Let's recap because I want to say FOMO again. <laughs> it just rolls off, doesn't it? FOMO. <laughs> so, I can keep saying it. Comparison is the thief of all joy of comparison. That's what says uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, don't ask me what year. A while ago. Okay. He wasn't far wrong. And why? Because we have FOMO, a fear of missing out, as if our experience is lesser, less fun, less fulfilling, uh, not as good as somebody else's uh, for whatever reason. The sense that somebody else is having more fun, training more than us, losing more weight, um, because it can only possibly be so. Um, we will often compare ourselves to, to and into situations as well that are out of our control um, or sphere of influence. Um, and it just... It's always, like I said, you, you always compare yourself to the fittest person that you know, not the person who is closest to where you are right now in your stage of your journey, whatever that may be. We always compare to the most unachievable um, aspect and wonder why I always feel a little bit deflated. Uh, the name of the game is, um, don't, let, don't let you steal your own joy. Okay, find joy in being, being, comparing yourself to someone who's close to you, get to know them, get to understand them, right? Get to be like that person who is within your sphere of control. Right. So says me. I'm done. Right. <laughs> Six ways to improve your mental state.
Well, it takes you six. It takes a lot more than that. I'm only going to cover six tomorrow. Uh, yes, it is normal time tomorrow, so it's five o'clock tomorrow's. Uh, join me for that one. In the meantime, as always, have a lovely evening and catch you tomorrow.